Hi FlossTube, it's Lynn, the Canadian Stitcher, back for a weekly update. Uh, talk about some cross stitch things that I've got going on and do that uh, surprise giveaway draw. Uh, hello and welcome to everyone and a special welcome to my new subscribers. I've gotten a few new subscribers in the last week. Um, so welcome to my channel. Um, I just want to tilt the camera down. I want to show you something so that I can move it because I don't want my cross stitch getting in it. So this is going to be kind of funny because I'm, I'm no camera woman. So this is my hands in the way. This is a bowl of pansies and a few other little things from my garden. So when I was cleaning up my uh, kitchen, decluttering, and I got into the cupboard above the fridge, which is inaccessible, except by chair, right? Um, that's where all the stuff goes that you, I don't really use. So I brought out this crystal platter. It was a bit dusty. I'm just going to put this down so it doesn't get spilled. Um, I'll put a picture of that on Instagram too that's coming up um, so I, it was kind of dusty and I washed it and then I had it drying and I looked at it and I thought what am I gonna do with this I don't it's not me I don't serve fancy dinners or you know that, that kind of thing and I thought about donating it and then I remembered my uh, floating gardens that I do or my floating um, flower displays because I do a container garden, it's very hard to grow tall cut flowers um, in containers. So I tend to grow the shorter kind of fluffy ones like pansies, elysium, lobelia, that kind of thing. And every summer, um, throughout the summer, usually on my coffee table, I have just like a little the, a crystal dish or something like that with just like the little flowers floating in it. So I decided to keep that platter and use it for that purpose. So that's, I just call it a flower float. That's and it's just a really nice way to have some outdoor flowers inside without having to have them cut and um, in a vase. Something different. Give it a try. So Tina from Simply and Stitches. This is going to be fun. Um, so we're doing a race to the finish for the Lavender and Lace Angel of Summer. So she's making it her focus piece for the month of June. And I'm going to try my best to finish this one in the month of June, but not making her a, a focus piece that I'm only going to be working on this one. So uh, this is the Angel of Summer from Lavender and Lace. This is mine. I did get a bit more work done on her this week. I did a bit more on the garland down here, almost done the garland. And the sash is finished, and now I'm continuing, and I'm filling in the detail on her dress here. So she created a hashtag, the Summer Angel Race. And I recently joined Instagram, but didn't don't really know how to use it or didn't know how to use it. So I asked her if she would do a little tutorial on her video. Um, so I did po I did learn how to use it, very basic. <laughs> And I posted a picture today that goes along with her picture. So this is where I'm going to be starting at for uh, today, moving forward with this one. It's probably going to take me a little bit of time to learn Instagram. You know, at one point I only had one YouTube video up and I learn and I do more and get better at it. So just be patient with me. So my Instagram name is, it ended up having to be a play on my YouTube name. So... Um, as you know, my YouTube name is The Canadian Stitcher, or FlossTube, The Canadian Stitcher. So my Instagram name is Canadian The Stitcher. It's, it was the best that I could do. And it uses all three words, it just switches them around a little bit. So I'll put it in the info box um, down below too. So Tina posted her video on Friday, and she shows her starting point also, and took a picture of it and posted it on Instagram under the hashtag summer angel race 
and she's invited and I'm inviting anybody else who's working on the lavender and lace summer and ace sorry got a little cat here of course um the angel um the summer if you finished it if you're just starting it if you're halfway through it if you're almost finished to come with us and and um share your pictures on Instagram so we can see everybody's progress and, and how everybody's working on theirs. She also did the, the quick tutorial at the end of the video. And at the beginning of the video though, um, she does so, show some beautiful, beautiful finishes that she has. So check out her video from last Friday. So, uh, question and answers. So. Last week I had talked about um, making a working copy and copyright infringement laws and, and that kind of thing and I did get a lot of comments on the creation of working copies to use um, and then discard afterwards, right? So in, in the comments there was some conflicting information and um, some strong opinions which are fine to have um, but I decided I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do me, I'm going to do my thing and everybody can do their own. If, if you disagree with making a working copy, then don't do that. For myself, it works for me. I'm going to continue to do it. I discard my working copy when I'm finished and any other extra copies I have. I'm not copying them to sell them. I'm not doing anything um, that would be considered a copyright infringement, which I believe would be to copy it, sell it, and make it money off of it. So... Um, so then some questions. Nancy Siebert asked what Ada fabric I was going to use, or the count of Ada I was going to use for my next angel. And it's 16 count. And of course it's in the other room. I think it's Twilight Blue Ada. I'll show it again when I uh, actually set up to, to start stitching that one. And then Angela Springett asked me if I could do a demo of my stitch laying tool. The needle trolley that I showed last week. This is my homemade one. I made it, I just put a darning needle onto a little ring that goes on the finger. So I, I will do a tutorial on, on how to use this one and I also have um, two other types that I use. Um, once I get my camera angle figured out that I can actually shoot down into what I'm actually stitching on and do, I'm planning on doing some stitch with me videos and maybe some um, like more tips and tricks for stitching and then do something like this of, of, you know, demonstrating how to use different tools or that kind of thing. So that'll be coming in the future. So who I've been watching on Flosstube this week? I'm still in the seas of my subscriptions. <laughs> I think I have three more and I'll be done the seas and I can start doing, watching the Ds of my, uh, all the people that I'm subscribed to. It takes a long time when you're watching I, I go back, I'll watch the first one and see if they have um, kind of the, the um, kind of things that I like to stitch on or what I might be interested in. And then, um, then I'll go and I'll watch starting at the back of the videos. And if they're working on something in succession, if I go ahead and watch ahead, then I think I'm getting like a spoiler and I don't want to see how they've progressed. So I'll watch from the end and I'll watch all like all the way. Otherwise, I'll watch three of the older ones, one of the newer ones each weekend when I sit down. I do that with one, one person, and I've almost made it through the seas. So this week I've been watching Crafty Gaming Jamie. She does hades and makes just incredible, remarkable progress on her hades. Um, she's got several that she's working on, and she was doing one for, for Mania. Really beautiful work. She's also doing the Long Dog Sampler Death by Cross Stitch. And I think, I think, I think she's using a variegated floss. And then she uh, gave a nod to um, Game of Thrones and did the um, lion and the dragon. And then she, I think she created her own dire wolf and stitched them in, in in different colors. So they're really outstanding on that. I really, really like her interpretation. It looks really good. And then I also have been watching Cross Stitch IL. And she's living in Israel. She's originally from Russia. 
she does have one video where she does a hay chart parade and then shows how many of them she started and where she got with them and that kind of thing. And she stitches really different kind of things is just because of what's available for her to purchase in the area of the world that she's living in. So I think she gets some of her things from Russia. And she's been showing some of the Riolis kits, which I've seen very infrequently, but she did show two of them and they're, they're absolutely beautiful. And her work on them is absolutely beautiful. So um, if you have a chance um, to watch her, that's Cross Stitch IL. Really interesting because she doesn't stitch any of the, you know, the stuff that we're used to seeing around here in North America. So yeah, so check her out. And then a new part that I'm doing is mentioning a non-floss tuber that I watch. Um, so the, I don't think I've watched them recently. I don't think they've posted any videos for a while, but the channel is called Improv Everywhere, as in improvation, improvational comedy. So it's Improv Everywhere. And they've got a whole long story of, of how they got this started and, and why they do what they do. But what they do is um, they're the originators of the No Pants subway ride. So they did the first No Pants subway ride, which then became a worldwide thing. And there's one day of the year that people all over the world get on the subways without pants on just to create scenes and that's what they do. They say they create scenes and then they just improvise funny different little things. They get crowds involved and, and get, you know, surprise people with different things that they do. So my favorite one out of all of them is it's called the Pirates of Central Park where they rent one of those little rowboats and then they pretend to be pirates in, in Central Park. It's absolutely hilarious. And if you haven't figured out yet, I like comedy. I like stuff that makes me laugh. Uh, it takes the stress out of the day. So this week I did take the angel to work. I already showed you her, but I took the angel to work, but the light wasn't good enough in, in my office to be able to see um, well enough. And I'll tell you why after. So um, normally it is, it's normally a sunny office, but this week it wasn't. So, so I brought her home and I took the goose back to do the back stitching. And so I'll be working on the, the back stitching on the goose. Um, at work on my lunch breaks instead. And then I did start the Alessandra Adelaide Needleworks, Albera de Valentino, the tree. This one I'm doing on 14 count. And I know not many people work on 14 count, but there's a very specific reason why I'm doing 14 count. And I, I'll tell you when I, when I get to that part of it. This is gonna be a, um, probably a couple videos um, showing what I'm going to be doing with this one. So I started at the bottom, just in the middle, at the bottom there, so that it was in the middle of the fabric for sure. And this is the fabric that I dyed myself with Rit Dye. So I got that far done on the tree trunk, and I'm right at the part now where the tree trunk will split. And whoopsie, too much glare. And then there's a heart in the tree trunk, and then it goes up into the branches. So made good progress on that one, but still working on the angel a little bit each day too. Excuse me. I just want to show you. Um, yeah. So with the 14 count, I'm finding that my needles falls out of the hole really easily, so I'm using larger size needles these ones. I think this might be a 24 or even a 22. Right. And I have an even bigger one. I think this one's an 18 that I've been using with the, the big, big, big holes of the 14 count. So I made this little needle minder out of abalone shell. I thought was really pretty. And this one's from an old brooch. And then this one was also a brooch. It's a key. It's just a key with a little heart hanging from it. And then I wanted to show you something a little bit different with the scissor box this week. Right off. So I told you I made a whole bunch of scissor fobs. And a scissor fob is just an attachment uh, with some type of clasp or some type of attacher that you put onto the edges of your scissors. One for decoration, and also two if you if you 
stitch on a couch or a chair and you drop them they're very easy to to find and they keep helps to keep you from losing them in the couch cushions so i did attach my needle threader where am i this is a Dritz needle threader and I just put a simple little clasp on there and I attached it to my scissors so that I always know where this is and I don't lose this and then I change my needle my uh, sorry scissor fobs every week so this one is a little group of keys a little group of skeleton keys and this is what I want to show you so this gadget here this would be called a zipper pull and this one is on a swivel so this would have been probably off of like a name tag or something like that. I reuse <laughs> old things. So this is probably off of a, you know, a work name tag or something like that. And then I just made the little key ring with the different little keys on it. So that's one way um, to attach a scissor fob. Another way is just simply using a zipper pull. You can get these on Amazon. They're called zipper pulls, metal zipper pulls, zipper pulls. These ones I really like. I like these actually better than a clasp because you just have to put pressure on that little bit, snap them on instead of having to undo a clasp. And a third way is to use a clasp. Just a regular, these are called lobster clasps. You can get them at Michael's or any jewelry supply places. I put a really big one on this one. I had an itchy nose. Again, the cross-stitch itchy nose. I um, had some of these really large ones and wonder what, when I was making jewelry what I would ever use them for but I did keep them and so they're really good for making these little scissor fobs and then one other method that you could use I think they've really gone out of style now but cell phones when originally the, like the, the blackberries and that came out they had a wrist strap with them and so a lot of people made uh, or, or yeah they were um the cell phone charms on their cell phones so this one is just a cell phone charm uh, lanyard, I think they're called, and then I just attached a little heart onto that one. So these ones, I actually had them with my business because I was selling them as cell phone charms originally. And these ones you just do up with a little slip knot. Just pardon me for a second while I undo it. You could also do this with a, a piece of elastic or a little piece of string, just tie it on there. So while I'm fiddling with this, I'll tell you, just if you if you go through your jewelry, if you have jewelry or old jewelry laying around, or you go to a thrift store and you find jewelry, pretty much anything that dangles could be used as a scissor fob. You just need to attach. You just have to have a ring or some way to attach it. So, okay, so here's the cell phone charm. And you just put it through the end of the scissors and make a loop and then pass the charm through that little loop and it makes a knot. And it's nice and secure on there. So if you have, even if you had mismatched earrings and you only have one left of an earring that you really liked, try making it into a scissor fob. You'll still get some enjoyment out of it and it's, yep, yeah, adds a little bit of extra fancy cross stitching. Okay, we talked about the Angel of Summer. So the nail polish of the week. <laughs> this one is China Glaze. It's another little mini bottle. I'm trying to use up all these little mini bottles and get them out of my, my uh, collection. This is called Too Much of a Good Fling and it's a minty kind of green. Bracelet, this was one of those when Pandora was really um, big. I don't know if it still is or not, but I got some of the imitation Pandora beads and I would sell them individually at my booth with the bracelets or I would make necklaces out of them and stuff. And the one I like about this one, I made this one. This is just, I just kind of threw this one together. This one's got a dolphin with a little um, cat eye bead on it. So I thought that was really cute. Plans for this week coming up. So I am going to work on the angel a little bit every day. Continuing on with how I've been doing it. A little bit on the garland. And then once that garland is done, I'm going to move to the gar uh, garland of her dress. And then one thread on the dress. And that might be all I do in the day. Or I might pick that up again later in the day and do that one more time. I'm also going to work on the tree. 
a little bit um, each day, probably try and do one full thread uh, so I can make some more progress on that one. And then the more of the focus piece for the week is going back to Extra Large, which is the Hade Light of the Lynx. Oh, I got glare. I'm sorry. Oh, I love this picture so much. This is Josephine Wall's artwork. This one is 40 pages and I'm working it on 18 count Zweigert in the color Silver Moon. And I don't have very much progress made on this one. I think this was two, two weeks worth, like oh, one full week and then doing another full week. And there is partial pages at the bottom there. So where I am is just right down in here. I think I'm just filling in these dark parts of the trees. I don't think this one's gonna look like anything until I would probably get complete, completely do this tree part. And then in here, mm, looks like flowers. Yeah, it's flowers. So it's probably gonna be hard to see any real detail of the picture coming in until, you know, we get more up in here, so. But I'm excited to work on that one because I haven't worked on that one for a while. Plans for the rest of June. Okay, so I'm gonna try and work on the tree and the angel at least a little bit every day. Still work on um, backstitching the goose. And I'm gonna continue to the focus on the finishes. So the angel, the tree, the goose, maybe some of these other little ones. Um, in the, in the following week after I work on the links there. June 21st is the first day of summer. So I might make a new start just because it's the first day of summer. So last year when I made all those plans and I had planned out all throughout the year every day that I was gonna be making a new start in that, it was a, that was a test and it's probably not something that I'm gonna do again. I'm just, I've got so many starts and I'm not finishing as much as I would like to be. Uh, first day of the season, when the seasons change though, those are special days of the year for me. So I think I'll continue to do that. So I'll be doing a new start for sure for first day of summer, first day of fall, winter, spring. Um, so first day of summer, I will probably start that pansy sampler that has that little um, flower pot of pansies with the shovel and then the alphabet letters. So. And then I'll be working on doing the conversion of the Canadian Beauty. Should I? No, I'll show her later. Sorry, I, I didn't bring them. I, I didn't bring them up. They're just right over there. But um, so the Canadian Beauty is the Joan Elliott one, and I'm going to do a conversion of her for her dress. I'll I'll make sure I have them out here for for next week. Um, so I'm going to do a conversion for her dress because uh, it's hard to see. There's little animals all around her red dress, and it's hard to see the brown animals. So. I'm going to have to sit, sit down with that one and figure out how I'm going to change the colors of her dress um, so that the animals that are surrounding her show up really, really nicely. And I also, um, the maple leaves above her head, I, I want to make them, you know, kind of like red. Okay, so with the, um, the, little, the, the little pansies that I picked, um, I live in Edmonton, Alberta. And of course, there's a lot of forest. <laughs> so we have many, many forest fires that are burning right now. I, I'm going to show you this. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well at all. So this is Edmonton. This is where I live. And these are all the fires that are burning in Alberta right now. And these two great big ones are the ones that they call like out of control. And that's all kind of to the northwest of us. So I think it was Tuesday, the wind was blowing from the northwest and it was so smoky here. Um, I, there's, I mean, there's people that have it a million times worse than us having to deal with smoke in the air. We had low visibility, we couldn't see past two blocks, two past city blocks, that's how smoky it was. Um, but there have been entire communities that have had to be uh, evacuated I don't think any of the, the bigger, bigger centers have been. 
certainly um, not as big a fire as in 2016 when um, the entire city of Fort Murray had to be evacuated and was actually on fire the city. Um, but it is, you know, in communities and homes have been destroyed and people have been displaced and they're living in community centers now and I mean it's it's just devastating terrible the, the forest fires and it's really early in the year already so there's still you know uh, a lot of season left for the, the forest fires so well but so when I went out to my garden yesterday I was I was doing my deadheading and I was looking at my flowers and what is this stuff on here there was a fine layer of ash all over my deck and all over my flowers so that's that's blowing from pretty far away um, to get ash coming from those fires up there so that was kind of surprising so I kind of thought well I'm not gonna clean them I'll just keep deadheading them and eventually they'll, they'll get themselves self-cleaning when they make new flowers so let's do the giveaway so I had Purchased the Teresa Wentzler, Wentzler, sorry, Egyptian sampler, and and then decided that this was beyond um, what I would want to stitch as far as um, technicality, complexity, um, and the time investment that would be made to stitch this. So I decided to give it away. So there was quite a few people who asked for it. So I've got your names in a little little bucket here. I'm going to draw one name. And the winner is Vicki Coleman. Last name is K-O-L-M-A-N. So Vicki, um, please get in touch with me. I'll put my email address in the um, information section down below. So send me an email to that email address. I'll also leave a comment on your comment. And yeah, so please get in touch with me. I'm gonna need uh, your email. I'll need you to email me so I can get your address so I can send this off to you. So good. Um, Congratulations on, on winning that. Uh, that's all I have for this week. Did I show you the weekly Christmas ornaments? I don't think I did. So I got, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's on the table. Four little, little Christmas ornaments. There's a stocking, a tree, a stocking, a tree. Very easy. And it adds to my little pile of my goal of what is it, 50, 51 Christmas warrants? 50 Christmas warrants by Christmas. Okay, so have a good week, guys. I will see you probably next week with um, more progress on, on how I'm doing with these three projects that I'll be working on for the week. And we'll see you later. Bye.